the bus today when I was researching, I found out there's this method of quantum computing called boson sampling. And what boson sampling is, well, first, have you ever heard of those toys, like the pachinko machines, where it drops some balls down and goes into like what, maybe 10 or so slots on the bottom, yeah? Well, this is like that except with photons. It uses special mirrors and prisms to reflect the light in every which way. And there's a tiny, and I mean tiny hole that the light has to reach. And the most that their research team has ever gotten was 14 photons. And a direct quote, photons do not wait for each other. All of the photons have to be made at the exact same time because if photons are not made at the exact same time, or rather the photons generated at the exact same time there, if they aren't generated at the same time there, then the photons that were generated before or after are going to be quote unquote lost and they won't be able to recover them and it will mess up the entire machine. And the entire point of quantum computing is for a way to take, okay, so we have a classical computer right here, a TV, regular Samsung TV. Now, so this can't compute as fast as some of the newer tech, and I'm not saying that this is old tech, I'm just saying that this isn't quantum tech. And quantum technology can compute faster because it uses the elements of quantum physics instead of electronic physics always. So, as everybody knows, there's transistors of certain types. I mean, we, I'm pretty sure we've already made a video about that, no? And we could release another one about it in the future after I research it, but still. So, the basic core property is that it wants to flow through this piece of metal instead of these pieces of plastic, because plastic is an electric insulator, which means that electricity doesn't pass through it very well. Just like the insulation in these walls, heat doesn't pass through it very well. That means that when it's cold inside, the heat can't escape. When it is warm outside, the heat won't come in. And this is a little bit off topic, but you know how windows have like that little gap between outside glass and the inside glass? Well, it's actually filled with a special kind of gas, an insulating gas, so that it's still clear, just to clear that up. But you want to run through this piece of metal instead of this piece of plastic, and there are a bunch of different ways it can go. As we all know, it has to have a power source. In TVs, it gets it directly from the house. But in things like my phone here, you can see it's not plugged into anything. And this can't wireless charge either. So if I just place my phone right there, it's not connected to anything. It's not getting a power source, really. A power source to charge it. So this right here would have to have some sort of battery that can slow release its electricity through the system. As we all know, it has to be a rechargeable battery, not one of those one use and toss out the window kind of batteries. So I think that started as you talking about some sort of light bell curve, yeah. something or other. Yeah, those uh, bell curve toys. Mm -hmm. So, just so how imagine, does that relate to quantum computing? Well, quantum computing is supposed to be faster than its best classical counterparts, right? I guess so, yeah. That's the entire point of it. But, I, th I just lost my train. <laughs> happens this to happens. me all the time. Just wait a second. Yeah, those pachinko machines. Mm -hmm. 
They send light beams down, the prisms. So what does that tell us? Of, does that tell us something about light, or what is that? It's actually a way to compute faster. Oh. Like you, How is that? So if this TV was quantum and 4K, I guess. I mean, I can see the pixels from here. But you can't remember there. That's off topic, but still. <laughs> so it's a way to compute faster. So it would be a bell curve. And the detector would be right in between teensy far away this piece that's super close together to the other piece right smack dab under it so if it was let's just say this tall the bell curve started right here the very tip of it detector would be all the way under it at the bottom and if they gave a reason for why that computes faster or not I don't know and if they did, I forgot. So it's kind of a new research that's out there? It's yeah. A new thing that's been yeah. done? That's pretty cool. And I think it possibly is the most efficient way of quantum computing. And that concludes the video. <laughs> Bye.